Today we'll be comparing using glue to a congruent mesh for connecting meshed bodies. We'll be looking at both accuracy and time to solve. For the study, we'll be using a cantilevered beam with a unit load on one end. We'll be looking at mid-span stress on the top of the beam and compare it to the theoretical stress, which is 15 psi. Here, if we mesh with congruent bricks, the stress very closely approximates the theoretical stress. The same is true for a congruent mesh of tets. Simpson and Astrian also supports using nine noded pyramids to connect eight noded bricks to ten noded tets. When using glue instead of a congruent mesh, the answers are nearly as accurate. Here we have glued the bricks to tets with no transition elements, no pyramids, and we get a more accurate result. I've summarized the results here, including the number of nodes and time to solve when using six cores and the element iterative solver. Let's take a look at how I created these models. First, I created a new part file. And then some geometry. Here we'll create a block. And we're basically going to create the beam in two halves, equal lengths. Then we'll go into the pre-post application, SimCenter 3D and create our simulation files. Here I don't need an idealized part. Then we'll create a linear static solution with the element iterative solver on. Now also I'm using six cores to solve. If you'd like to use more cores you can either put a parallel statement in or just type a number into the parallel line in the solver parameters. So we'll go back to the FEM and we'll start by putting a tet mesh on one half of the beam and a brick mesh on the other half. Now I haven't created any mesh mating conditions so there's no congruent mesh. We've got duplicate nodes at the shared face between the two beams. Next we'll assign a material so that it will solve and then we can apply our glue constraints and loads. So here to apply the glue we'll create an automatic face pair recipe where it will search for faces that are within a thousandth of an inch and we'll take the defaults for creating the glue then we'll create a fixed constraint on one end of our cantilevered beam and a unit load on the other side. So that will put the beam in bending. All right, now we're ready to save and solve. And here I'll pause the video while it's solving, but you can see that 13 seconds have elapsed. And we can review the results. So here we'll be looking at the element nodal stress in the Z direction, basically looking at the tension on the top and compression on the bottom. And we'll also turn on a banded display and we'll look at the stress on the feature edge of the beam at the intersection between the tets and the bricks. And there I didn't have averaging on. Let's go ahead and turn on averaging and take a look at those results again. 
and here we can see uh, 15.03 psi which correlates very well to that 15 psi that we saw earlier in the theoretical answer. Another way we can look at this is with isosurfaces so that we can see the stress continuity across the joint. If you want to save time connecting meshes, I encourage you to use glue to efficiently and accurately create your finite element models.